Well today we're somewhere very special, we're in Phil Pearson's workshop and uh, we've come up today to pick up our engine but I think actually people ought to be aware Phil, as far as I'm concerned, is Mr Gold Star. What he has done for the Gold Star is incredible. Now the Gold Star probably ran out of production in 63 yeah. and parts were becoming an issue over the years, wear and tear. Phil has produced everything for a Gold Star engine. I mean everything. This guy has produced crankcases, barrels, cylinder heads, rocker boxes, crankshafts, you name it, he's done it. And here today is just a little bit of what Phil has been able to do. Now, all this sort of work doesn't just happen. I mean, Phil's been doing this for over 40 years and there's a lot of time. And it's not just, you can imagine, you've got drawings to produce, castings to have made, machining, and so much work. So I, I've seen a, a little bit of what you've achieved. So I really want to just have a look around your workshop and you tell us about your yeah. machinery and we'll have a look at the engine that's been done and what we had done on that, which I think previous videos we said about the crankshaft, we had it reboard, the mag platform done, but we've had other work done to it as well. So we'll show that as well, but Phil's just going to take us around the workshop. Yeah. So whatever you want to show us, Phil, and as, as far as your laves and your milling and your heads, we're, we're interested in. So Yeah, well, that's the bridge port. So, the bridge port. So this is used for... Milling. This is your mill. Yeah, yeah, yeah mainly do the milling on that and so, so forth. Do all the flywheels on that. But in this workshop, we've got numerous machines. I'm just blown away by the amount of equipment Phil's got. And when we look at a lathe here, We've got the tool post and we've got cutter that's in, in use at the moment, but everything else is here ready to use for a specific job, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What are these for, these ones? That's, uh, they're tool holders, that's just so everything's set to the right height. Mm -hmm. So I just pick it up and it's drop easy. that in, yeah. Yeah, it's all ready to go. What we've got here is one of your on your blanks, yeah. this is for a flywheel, isn't it? This is yeah. where we start the job of the crankshaft. So from, from this fill, where will you go with this, first of all? So you have a pair of these. I'll rough it out yep. and then uh, square it up, drill and grind the main shaft hole. And then when that's all done, I put it in... Uh, Put it in there. I don't know if you can see that. This, this is all heavy gear, so oh, it, yeah. yeah. Yep. Put it in the rotary table. From that stage, when we're making up the flywheels, the stubs have to be made, don't they? Yeah, I make these. Uh, I make them. They're the time and side shelves. And, and this is where we've shown. Phil showed me in the in the first place where. The old ones crack. We, we've shown on the bench WD-40 right. squirted in here, mm. and you can see around the, the flange where it starts to crack. Well, these cranks are pressed up, aren't they? Yeah. With a, quite a tonnage. Yeah, that normally takes sort of anything, uh, I don't know, about five tonne on that press on okay. there, and the big end is normally eight to ten tonne. Cool. Just going to show people how... Well, Phil, he's here to show you in a moment, but how we set up the balancing of a crank. So the first thing you're going to measure here is small end, isn't it? Yeah. On the scales. 144, 46. Put it there. This is grams, Phil. Yeah, grams, yeah. yeah. That's the weight of the piston, 483. That come out at 629. That's so equal, so 62% of the balance factor. So it's 389.98. So it's 390, oh, roughly. Then you take the piston away from that, or the con rod. So it's 243 grams 98. So 244.
So just explain to what people what you're doing now, Phil. So you're replicating... I'm replicating the 244 grams yep. to hang on the end of the conrod. Right? Which, Which substitutes there, like, the weight of the piston. 200, yeah, that's, that's the balance, balance weight. These sleeves are to keep it equal both sides. I'll just put this down. Dave, you could um, put the mic near Phil so we can hear it. Yeah. That just went a little bit off the bottom, you see. Explain to us how this works, because well, if you before. yeah, if you don't have the weight on it, that'll just shoot up the top lot. Like. Yeah. yeah. Right. So what we're trying to do, basically, where well, people are not aware of that an engine does need to be balanced, doesn't it, the crankshaft, yeah. against the weight of the piston. Yeah, that's right. When people have vibration, it's because it's not been balanced, heavy vibration. You should be able to eliminate most of that by balancing the crank properly. See, that's I've already done that, you see, so that's what that is. That stop anyway, I'll look. So essentially when the piston's on there, it'll just roll around, it can stay at any sort of position, can't it? Yeah. This is the, this way the proof of pudding comes in for a smooth running engine, isn't it? Without the uh, that vibration. That can do, but um, that's only uh, a compromise because um, sometimes if you um, balance them, if it's in a different frame, that's a lot of different, uh, different balance factor. Like if I do it in a Norton frame, it's normally 66%, and the Sealy's 66%. Really? Just with the Gold Star engine, yeah. Yeah, but I find they're best at 62 with them blow wheels. The original was 58. Something that Phil was telling us, he, he's recently had an engine that um, was stripped down. That belonged to my mate. That must be the third crank I made. This, yeah. this one here, yeah. and it's not been stamped up with a number because you've stamped all your cranks right. now. Well, I didn't know how many I was going to make, you see. <laughs> what are we up to now? 100 nearly? No. Nine, 960 something. 900? <laughs> 960 something. 900,000 yeah. almost. That's we incredible. That's 30 years old, didn't we? That crank? Yeah. yeah. I've been making them for 30 that? years, yeah. 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 So, that's, so that's, that's 30 years old. And funny enough, as I was saying, I was dreading pulling that engine to pieces because that belonged to my mate. And he died, passed away. And uh, somebody bought it off of his local and he said he was going to pull it to pieces. And I thought to myself, uh, I'd be lucky if that ain't naked. Does that make a difference, naked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, all I'd done is put a new roller bearing in there, needle roller, and uh, he, he's even got to use the old valves, and he's done, he's done a lot of miles on that. And you were saying he's not the, he doesn't do a lot of maintenance, or your mate who owned the bike didn't do a lot of maintenance. He was the worst of a lot he was yeah. for maintenance. So you start from cold and run this road down the road, and it would be a dual carriageway. Yeah. Within a few minutes, he'd just wind it up yeah. and go. I couldn't believe, <laughs> I couldn't believe it actually, I couldn't believe the condition that was in, that was okay. That's incredible. I, I, I forgot that you built so many crankshafts. Um, yeah, it's incredible. But all these crankcases, like, you've replicated these two, haven't you, as well? You've done, like, say, everything. And when you look at these castings, it's a lot of work, you know. Well, this one, I've done the mag platform on that. This is a, a, a regular thing, isn't it, that comes yeah. into you? The mag platform being here with the mag sets, this will wear quite badly. And... Uh, because it's only strapped down, isn't it? And the oil cell housing. Yeah, these these can wear out. And you've had to build this up a weld and remachine this? Yeah, full of weld, yeah. Yeah, and you wouldn't know it had been done now. But the process, you will put this into uh, a, a stripping um, tank, won't you? Yeah, decoking Decoke liquid. tank, you call it. Then it'd be vapour blasted. Vapour blasted, yeah. But lovely finish. Um, well, nice to say, Phil, that this is another lathe that's, that's another lathe, yeah, set bigger. up for doing Pacific work when it comes yeah, in. I mainly rough the flywheels out on that. This would be the first process that, that blank would go on to. Yeah, really. yeah that would be the first one, yeah. 
and again yeah. everything is set up above so it's all to hand. Yeah. That's the uh, welder up there. Yeah, yeah. The TIG welder. TIG, yeah. yeah. So everything's TIG. They're, they're nice little units aren't they now? They're, 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 they're quite yeah, good, good there, aren't yeah. Also the oven over there. The oven Phil? Oh the oven. The oven. <laughs> the camping stove. Oh yeah that's, that's what I warm the Just bits up on. You know if you put a liner in or anything else. Just want to show people the comparison with a standard crank and one of Phil's cranks and well, Phil explained to you that it's, it's completely different. Do you want to just mention about yeah. your crank? This is that's the original BSA crank and uh, obviously that's all riveted in and so forth and uh, the big end is uh, secured by a nut whereas these ones are all press fit. But back in the day when they were being raced, I mean, they would have been pulled down at how many hours of racing, probably? Well, they, I think that was 20 hours racing. 20 hours. So these crankshafts, I mean, a, a lovely piece of workmanship. I mean... I've never had one come apart, put it that way. Yeah. And they've been quite reliable, to be honest with you. I've had the odd one, you know, over 30 years, but... So where are most of the Goldies? Have, have a lot gone to the States and such like? Yeah, I used to sell quite a lot of cranks to the States and what have you. And so and forth. And uh, mainly England is the biggest supplier uh, for, for the cranks. Yeah. A lot of these are in race bikes, aren't they? Yeah, there's, there's quite yeah. a few in the race yeah. bikes, yeah. And you've been very successful at racing. That's another thing that we, we haven't mentioned that you've developed the gold star engine yeah i've done some short strokes for people and so forth you know and you've got some good results too yeah yeah we'll, we'll show you in a moment when we finish this little bit a little bit of literature that will show that which is interesting i found very interesting anyway mm. so that that is a crankshaft there comparison against one of phil's and a stock one mm. so uh, going back to the racing i think that's 50 percent rider 50 percent mechanical so uh a good combination. Yeah, he was a good rider. Good yeah. rider. And yeah. reliability too. That was very reliable. Yeah. Very so, reliable. So, you know, it's, as we've shown just now, these cranks you never have any problems with. No. And, you know, but that's years of development. It, it's something that didn't just happen. Yeah. You've, you've worked on this, studied this, and you've perfected and carried on development work on these. But where parts weren't available, you've made parts. Yeah. You make well, literally everything, don't you? Have done over the years. Yeah, I've had the odd uh, big end go and so forth, you know, but what has to be expected after 30 years? Yeah, yeah. And I had one chap phone up and uh, he said to me, he said, uh, what are your cranks like? And I said, they're all right. So he said, have you had, had many failures? So I said, not many, I say, but I've had the odd one or two. Oh, he said, I phoned someone else up and he's never had a problem with his. And I said, uh, he said, I like your honesty. He said, I'll buy one of yours. There you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Um, so what we move on to now, then, if you like, is the engine that we, we've we given Phil to sort out for us. This is the BB uh, engine. BB 34. Yeah. yeah. And we sent this up to you, didn't we, for various yeah. things. Crankshaft to be made, but also wear and tear on the pl mag platform. I'll let you talk about it, Phil. Yeah, that, there's another one that's all been welded. That's completely welded up and then remachined. But this gets quite badly yeah, it can do. marked, doesn't it? Because it's strapped down in vibration here and it, it yeah. indents, doesn't it, into here or whether the lugs are worn into the platform. Yeah, I think the main reason is that the mag straps come loose and uh, people didn't bother to yeah. check them, you know. But this, this is lovely. I mean, like, this is the new crank in here, and the way it turns is lovely and smooth. So new main bearings in here. We've, um, this has all been vapour blasted. And I'll take this back, and then what we do is we'll put the pump in the bottom, we'll build this up. We've got the barrel here and the head. It's been rebored, so there's a new piston, new guides, valves. So everything's done here. The rocker box is here. And, um, yeah... I've got the next bit of putting it together, but Phil is the guy. I just do the nuts and bolts. Phil is the guy that's the clever guy here. Without Phil, we wouldn't be to do the gold stars, to be honest with you. Um, so long may you carry on mm. helping out. I know you don't want to do too much, and, and I'm much the same. I, I still enjoy it, but I want to have a bit more time to do other things. But the gold star is close to my heart, and I know it really is close to your yeah. heart, because... 
if anyone's ever owned a Goldie and ridden a Gold Star, they know what we mean because there's right. nothing else like it, is there? Not really. It, I don't think it, it you can think a Gold Star the of the sound and the handling you get from a Gold Star. And when you look at it, you know, you think it's an older bike, but you come up along the young, alongside a youngster and a summit, you know, that you think's quick. These are very quick. You don't have to ride them quick, but they are, they're, they're turn they are, speed, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Goldie set, set up with a GP carb, as it should be. Yeah, it's, They'll keep up with the modern traffic today. They will, yeah. yeah and totally you can lovely. cruise along at 70, 70 plus, can't you? Yeah, easy, quite, quite, easy. quite, quite yeah. easily. Okay, so Phil, this is your own Goldie. Yeah. You've had this... 40 years. So this is where years, it all yeah. started from, wasn't it, really? Yeah, mainly, yeah. yeah. I did have one years ago, but that was a 350 and sold out earlier. But um, everything I made, I've put, put in this, tried it before I sell it. Test bed? Yeah. Yeah, so different developments you've done, it's gone in here. Yeah. So you, you're, you're a purist as well, aren't you? GP carb. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, you've got to put a GP carb on it. I think anyone that can ride these still properly, this is what you want on here, because inch smooth bore carburetor, isn't that? They suck in a bit of petrol. Inch and, yeah, inch and a half, yeah. Inch and a half, sorry. So this bike is a bit special. We know you've had it for 40 years, but yeah. you've done a lot of work on this. That's do right. You want to, do you want to tell us about what you've done on here that's a bit special? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a 600 engine in there. And uh, obviously, it's got the electric start, and it's got my clutch on it as well, which is a Suzuki-based thing. And, uh, electric start, so you perfected four Gold Stars, isn't it? Yeah. And that yeah. runs from the primary chain case? In the primary chain case, yeah. It has a motor underneath. M motor is underneath, yeah. And uh, that's one of the Eddie Doe twin lead and shoe brakes, which I made, used to make. So this brake that you got on here, you actually made one yeah. that I've got on my Goldie. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I, I can tell you, they, they work incredibly well. They're a lot they? better than that. Yeah. That's normally a lot better than a standard one. You do get the occasional standard one, which is okay. It's only a two-finger appliance, isn't it? You can, this, this is, yeah. yeah. But this, this is lovely because it's got the patina about this, and this is how they should be. It's a yeah. used bike. You still ride it now, don't you? Yeah, but I... Uh, I'd done that, as I say, 40 years ago, and uh, I ain't done much to it, to be honest with you. I still the original paint what I put on. And uh, as I said, that, that chroman... It's a bit that special. Was, that right. was done by Swan, in the Swan Kettle factory. You don't say this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if it's still, much, but it's, still a boat, are they? But that is special chrome in it, because it's not like your normal chrome, is it? No. As you just said, it was chrome that would been done in the kettle yeah. factory so it used to getting hot and cold these are all made out of stainless steel i've done all that and that's titanium and so forth you know most of that is titanium on there with the bolts and everything it's nice to see you still ride with clip-ons yeah 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 well when you go quick enough the wind holds you up. up yeah, yeah it does yeah whereas <laughs> when you got straight bars that try and pull you off don't it this is the original engine that came out of Phil's Gold Star that we've just been talking about. But this is a little bit special, isn't it, Phil? That's right, yeah. I'll let you talk about it. Yeah. Cause That's got the uh, oval crank in it. So if you watch it, you should see that come round oval. Now, this is something that you've only been doing for a short while. No, I've been doing it for quite a while Have now. you? Yeah, but I don't like making them because it takes another day to make them. So the advantage with this really is, really, is it to do with skirt the piston? Because that, that's right. Yeah, that missed the skirt of the piston when the when when the, when that go down. So you could have a longer stroke, couldn't you? Piston coming further down, or that, a longer piston. That will miss the piston at that. The tr the they, what they are is eight inch flywheels. Reduced to 7.1 on the ovality, and because um, you want more inertia in the flywheel. Right, okay, I got you. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the bits that Phil's got in his storeroom here. So these are all parts that you've made, aren't they? Yeah, this is one of your heads. They're all castings of it cast, and then machined them up.
that's that's a nice head, isn't it? It's yeah. been it's got, slightly altered, hasn't it? Because it's well, had the fins sort of like someone's polished, polished it, yeah. up, yeah. But I just got to do the ports and put the seats in, you know. And we've got up the end. There's a barrel there. That this is one of yours, isn't it? That's for the, that's for my engine out there, yeah. But like all the mag straps up the top here, you've produced those, and yeah, the taco drives below. We show in a moment. But all these are made out of stainless. They're stainless, yeah. These are the rev counter drives. Those are casting. How to start off with? So you've actually machined that. Yeah. Put all the gearing inside that. Produce the gearing as well to go in the whole lot. I buy the gears. You buy the gears. Yeah, but make the shafts. That's a lot of work, isn't it, Phil? Yeah. Four, four and a half hours to make sort of them if I do sort of ten or twenty at a time. Uh, but if you want the gold star to look right, yeah, that's right. It's it's all about detail, and you know this is what we've mentioned so many times. It's getting the detail right. It's like the fuel lines as well. The, when they left the factory, and you've got some up here, Phil. And, but you've had these made, and yeah, well, they make all the ends up for them and what have you. So that's all nicely knurled. But that's how it would have left the factory. They had them ends on when they left the factory. Yeah. yeah. And you can't buy those off the shelf. There's only one person that makes those. <laughs> I you think can. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he <laughs> makes them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the B31. So we've got various components that you've made. Sometimes you make parts from surplus material that you've cut off and you think well rather than waste it I'll make something out of that yeah, so that come off um, uh, to do with the oil rigs that was a bit of uh, piping so off of B30 31 or 33 and yeah. it's the top collar on the valve um, tunnel isn't it that's right yeah so Phil yeah, these are a pair of retaining plates aren't they for yeah, crankcase yeah, I don't think anybody's got them anymore so uh, they, they were turned out of a solid lump rather than make a press, you know, because they were pressed out originally. Yeah. That's quite a lot of work in just doing that, isn't it? It yeah, takes like, time, doesn't it? Good hour, good hour. Yeah. And this is sometimes where someone holds, holds a component and they go, well, how much is that? And they don't realise how long no. it's taken to make. Like making the nuts, nuts or bolts, do one-offs, you know, what you can charge is a fraction of... Of your oh, time, right. yeah. really, you're not covered. But well, none of us do. We don't cover that time it takes, do you? No. If you had fifty to make, it would be more cost-effective. But a one-offs are very hard, aren't they? Yeah, as, as, a, as a job finding anybody to make any of this stuff now. Yeah. Because obviously they want to make a hundred or a thousand of them. Yeah. In here, Phil, we've got. Well, I'm going to talk about this first. Yeah. A pair of crankcases here. The two halves. Now this is yours, isn't it? Yeah. You've had these made. So you've had the castings done, you've done all the machining yourself? Most of it, yeah. Yeah. And these are the rocker boxes. There's a lot of work in there, isn't there? A hell of a lot of work. Yeah. And these these people will probably realise what that is. Sump plate, yeah. Sump plate. It goes on the bottom of the engine. And you can have a drain down on there, can't you? That's right. I, d I don't put a magnet in them because the, I think the magnet attract all the dirt out of the engine. And then that's right in the position for the oil pump to pick it up. Yeah, it's true. Because that, that goes through the filter. Phil, we're just looking here. This this was done some time ago, I know. This shows you shows us, and we can show people here, the electric start that you perfected. Yeah. Well, you actually built this as your idea of being able to start a Goldie without using the kickstart. Yeah. So right in saying that the starter motor is underneath the primary chain case, and the drive for it is... In the primary chain case. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, so what What actually did you, how did you go about this? Well, I always kept on about electric start, and then a friend of mine who had retired at the time, he said, let's do this electric start. So I said, I'll make it as long as you fit it. <laughs> do, all the, do all the brackets and what have you. So anyway, uh, between the two of us, we come up with that, you know, and... Uh, this, uh, this mechanism here uh, fly back out of the way onto a magnet. But it enables people to carry on riding these gold stars where if they're going to struggle kick-starting the thing, at least they can use the valve lifter, get it up to rotation, don't they, then drop That's in right. the valve lifter and, and this will start it. 
So th this is a good upgrade to keep people riding the Gold Stars. I think if anyone want one, um, I can still start my Gold Star, uh, but I don't want to have to do much more than half a dozen kicks. You know. Get it right, they're usually one or two kicks, aren't they? Normally, yeah. normally. If you do, yeah. get it wrong, we know what they do. They kick that's back, right. don't they, sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> but that's really interesting, and that's some time ago. And what we got here also, which is interesting for people to look at, this shows um, an engine that was on a dyno, where the whole bike was on the dyno here, wasn't that it? Was, uh, yeah, that was the 350, which uh, produced, I think that was 38 brake horsepower. At the back wheel. At the back wheel, yeah, which they equate 10% uh, drop. And, uh, well, it was 38.7. That was the best figure there, look. That's, that's quite incredible horsepower, isn't it, on the back wheel? Because we've recently done some dyno testing on a, a parallel twin 650. Yeah. Which was just making barely just over 40, 43, I think, horsepower. Mm. 350 single, it's quite incredible. That's 350. And the 500, um, that is there up. 50.7, uh, fitted with a gardening carburetor, um, with uh, a GP2 carburetor, that was down to 48.9. What RPM are we looking at here? Well, that's six seven, and a half Six thousand. and a half, yeah. That's a, a really impressive figures. Yeah, they, they, they will rev more, but uh, the trouble of it is that if you're producing more brake horsepower by the higher revs, there's no point in no, revving it. because the power curve goes yeah. off, doesn't it? Yeah, just drop off. Yeah. yeah. And you've actually set up several, well, several of your engines have been used in, in competition work, and I know a, a race bike has done fairly well in the Isle of Man. And what we're going to come on to now is in 2012, we've got here Pearson Racing Calendar. This is an achievement in the season, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that actually, uh, um, the rider was Clive Ling, uh, who obviously ain't with us anymore, but he's a very good rider, and uh, obviously that's what he achieved in one year. You know, the the racing and so forth. I mean, to have 41 race wins and 63 podium finishes and seven new world lap, uh, uh, new lap records, that's quite incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he won the... 350 uh, Belgium TT and the 500 Belgium TT on it as well. Down on one of your engines that yeah. you built. And the spare engine out of the 500 went, I sold to a chap called Dave Hardman and uh, um, the rider was Phil McGurk and he was the first one to get round the island at over 100 mile an hour on a Goldie. That's an achievement, mate. Yeah. That really is. That's incredible. Yeah, and to, to see what we've seen today and to talk to the guy that has done all this work and put people out there on the podium, you know, it's 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 not everyone can do that. So really appreciate your time today, Phil. It's all right, lovely, yeah. Got to shake your hand. All right, then. Thank you, Phil. Thanks very much for your time today. And yeah. Alex, myself, can't thank you enough. Thank you. Okay. Right. That's it.